by the restless sea. We are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. speak again the immortal tale, The Dream Woman. Good Lord. Hello? Anybody here? Here, get away. Get away from that showcase. Oh, what are you up to, anyway? Open up the showcase, man, quickly. I'll open up your head with the end of this broomstick if you don't get away from there. Open the case, I tell you. You think I'm jesting? Well, I'll show you. No, 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 don't hit me. Don't. You get back out of there, then. There. That's better. What are you doing? Calling the police, of course. No. No, please. Please, don't call the police. Ah, look here, now. I run a humble antique shop, and I'm accustomed to all sorts of people coming in to browse around. But bursting into a man's place at the closing hour when he's cleaning up for the night and trying to break open his showcase right in front of his eyes, that's... Why, that's going a bit too far. I, I assure you I meant no harm. Explain yourself, then. What were you up to? Those knives. Yes? And what about them? I saw them through the window. From outside and... Well, now, you couldn't go wrong stealing any of them. There's not a finer collection in all England. Stealing them? I tell you, I had no intention of stealing any of them. There, there, there. All criminals are full of good intentions. Uh, look now, it's almost nine. Five minutes to closing time. You'd better be on your way. But, but I can't leave. I can't leave without that knife. Must I call the police after all? You couldn't touch their price in a hundred years. Why, you don't understand. I mean, that one there. The clasp knife with a buckhorn handle. Oh, surely you're joking. That's only a simple piece. Why, why, I only put it there out of the way until I find an appropriate tray for it. Certainly not with those genuine antique blades. But I want it. I must have it. Now, why don't you go quietly? You talk like someone from up on the hill. I tell you, I must have it. Get out now. Go on now. Get out. Well, what is it? What's the matter? Well, you're trembling. Look at you. You're white. Here. Here, sit down. Sit down. There. There, now. That better? Yes. Yes, thanks. Can I get you something? A glass of water? No. No, I'll be all right. You certainly gave me a fright. Now, what is it? What's the matter? Nothing, really. Why do you look at me that way? Well, you've acted mighty strange ever since you came in here. Don't worry. I'm not from up there, from the asylum. I'm not from up on the hill. Then you need to see a doctor. Bad. No. No, a doctor can't help me. I, I've been to the best physicians in London, to the leading psychologists at Oxford. None of them can help me. Not one. I, I confess it's driving me insane. Insane, I tell you. I, I can't escape it. It's like death itself. Fearful, inescapable. It's made me curse the day I was ever born. That's it. That's it exactly. My birth date. I've had nothing but misfortune on my birthday. All my life, ever since I can remember. And the worst misfortune occurred always and inevitably in five-year cycles. I broke my arm. On my twelfth birthday, my father was killed in a train crash. Then my best friend married my girl. At twenty-two, I lost all the family securities, plunging us into debt. Five years later, matters grew worse when I lost a good position in a bank. Another time, I fell through a grating and dislocated my hip, disabling me half a year until... Until finally, on my thirty-second birthday, my mother was stricken with paralysis. But surely you don't put any such stock in such, such such things. Accidents happen to all of us. Besides, 
What has all that to do with this clasp knife here? I'm coming to that. And believe me, all those occurrences were not coincidental. I tell you, it's a curse. A curse I shall never be rid of till... Oh, no matter. You ask about the knife. Well, that... That was the worst misfortune of all. Ten years ago it was, at shortly after midnight. I was returning from a seacoast town on the west coast of England. I was doing government work in the import-export trade at the time, and my duties regularly took me to the coast. To save time, I tried a shortcut. It was raining, and a high wind was blowing. Like tonight's storm, the country was wild, desolate. I lost my way. Finally, I came upon an old inn. It was settled back off the road on a high ridge. I drove the carriage to the stable with misgiving. As I walked on to the inn, each step seemed to echo a warning of impending disaster. It was my birthday. Two o'clock was the exact hour of my birth. And this... This was the fifth year of the vicious, cruel cycle. I could not control my racing thoughts. They... Five years, five years. Birthday. Broken arm, five years. We regret to inform you, father killed in crash. Father killed. Birthday. Five years, father, father killed. killed. Lost securities, we haven't a penny. Lost. Lost. Birthday. Securities, five, five years. A broken hip, you can't work for months, can't work. Falling. Slipping. Falling. Down, down, down. down. No, mother, it can't be. No, it can't be. Paralyzed. Birthday. Both legs, five years. No, no, mother. Are you all right? Mother! I raised my knuckles to knock. Beware, Frederick Scatcherd. The fifth year. This is the fifth year. Uh, Don't. Don't go in. Leave this awful place. Leave. Leave. Quickly. You're afraid. Afraid of the curse. Go on in. Knock. Go ahead. Knock. See, you are afraid. I raised my hand again to the heavy oak panel. Before I could knock... The door swung open. The innkeeper stood reflected in the doorway. Come in, come in. Don't let the storm blow out the hall fire. I went in. I discovered I was the only guest, which made me all the more uneasy. My tastes and a standard of the simplest. In no time at all, the innkeeper set supper before me. I ate, then made myself comfortable by the fire. Over the mantelpiece hung an evil-looking knife. It made me so uncomfortable that I had to ask the landlord about it. Another night it would have gone unnoticed, but tonight, my birthday, the cycle, it held an ominous warning. That's a curious-looking knife there. Where did it come from? Knife, sir? What knife? Why, that clasp knife there above the mantelpiece, with a buckhorn handle. Why, surely come, you must... Come, now, it's time for bed. You've had a hard night. You're tired. Never mind if I'm tired or not. I asked you a question. That knife. But, what? but, sir, there is no knife there. No knife? Come here. But you... Come here, I tell you. Of course, if it were... There, now. Look there at the mantelpiece. Is that a knife or isn't it? Why, no. Of course it's not a knife. What? Come closer. Here. Now, see for yourself. Man, you're right. I'd have staked my life. Oh, that's all right, sir. I can see where in the shadow of the fire you might have mistaken this mantelpiece designed for a knife. <laughs> Funny, I never noticed it myself before this. I, I don't understand how my eyes could have played such a trick on me. Oh, you should have eaten heavier. You're tired. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. I guess I'll go to bed. Very well. Good night, then. That storm. A man can't even undress for bed in peace. You're afraid, Frederick Scatcherd. Afraid. Afraid. No. No, I'm not afraid, but... But the moaning of that wind. <sighs> there it goes again. That clap of thunder and flashes of lightning. It's enough to drive a man mad. You're afraid. Afraid of tonight. Your birthday. The fifth year. 
Look at yourself. You're trembling. No. No, no, no. See? See, I put the candle on the dresser and my hand is steady. <laughs> there. There, now I can lie down a while. Sleep will come easier. You fool. Why didn't you extinguish the candle? You're afraid to be alone in the dark, that's why. You're afraid. Uh, 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 who's there? Speak up. There. There, I see you at the foot of the bed. Who are you? What do you want? <laughs> uh, a woman. No. Not really. <laughs> what do you want? Don't be afraid. I just came to pay you a visit. Stay away from me. Don't come any closer. What's that in your hand? It, it's a knife. That's right. It's a knife. See how clean and sharp the blade is. How it glistens. That buckhorn handle. It's the knife I saw over the mantelpiece. Why do you raise your arm? You're, you're going to kill me. Stay away. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> You mad woman. Don't stand back. Don't stab me. Murder! Wake up, everyone! Murder! What is it? What is it? What's wrong? A woman with a knife in her hand in my room. A yellow-haired woman. She stabbed at me twice. Uh, let's have a look. Here, hold the candle. Keep your gun ready. She's dangerous. Huh? Do you see her? Well, there's no one here. Impossible. She stood there as plain as day at the foot of this very bed. See there. Look at the torn bedclothes. Oh, you could have torn that in your sleep or even used a penknife to make those slits. But I have no penknife and I wasn't sleeping. The devil fly away with you. First a knife over the mantelpiece, now a murdering woman with a knife. I suppose to it was a clasp knife with a buckhorn handle. That's right. Now I know there's something wrong with you. You'd best see a doctor in a hurry, man. Such hallucinations. See here. I protest. Protest, is it? I should be the one to protest, coming into a peaceful man's place and babbling about a dream. Oh, why did I ever have to draw you as a guest? Very well. Lend me a light to dress by and I'll leave then. Better out in the storm than to spend another minute in this room. After what I've seen. Hurry it up, then. I wouldn't have taken your money if I'd known your dreaming, screeching ways beforehand. <laughs> Twenty minutes past two. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Nice time in the morning to frighten honest people out of their wits. <laughs> Maybe your dream woman got in through these strong fastenings. the woman in white. The knife. She, she's following me through the storm. Get up. Get up. Get along there. Get up. No. No, it's no one. My imagination again, I guess. Tonight. Tonight, the fifth year. The curse. Am I... Am I to be tortured? Haunted by... By a dream woman? wild woman brandishing a knife did haunt me. And finally I had to sit down and write a complete account of what had happened. An exact description of the woman in the inn. A year passed. Two, four. Then as the fifth year of the cycle neared, a fresh foreboding gnawed at me. I lost my appetite. My sleep became again fitful and I suffered moments of terrific mental strain. Then one day at a tea, I met Rebecca Murdoch, a young lady of a prominent London family. She had a disturbing personality, a fathomless something that frightened and intrigued me at one and the same time. I courted her. 
It was after a dance. Rebecca and I were walking in the garden. It was a beautiful night. Rebecca. Yes, dear. You said back there how much you enjoy those dances. Yes. And these walks. Frederick. And we both like music and books and, well, countless things. I can't think of anything we couldn't enjoy together. Of course, you don't know too much about my work, You but... know I'm interested in everything that concerns you. That's what I mean. Then why can't we... I mean... Yes. Rebecca, do you really like me? Need you ask? Do you love me as much as I love you? Oh, Fred, you're such a blind dear. Then... Then you'll marry me? Oh, silly, of course I will. Oh, oh stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop, Fred, you're mussing my hair. <laughs> Fred, I've got it. We can have a double celebration, can't we? We'll be married on your birthday. My... my birthday? Yes, why not? I... why, there's no reason why we can't, I suppose. No. No, there's no reason at all. My birthday. We were married on my birthday. The day of reoccurring doom. I feared that day, anticipating disaster... But it did not come. At last, I thought the spell was broken. Marriage, a honeymoon on the continent, a home we had planned together, just a string of good fortune. Why, even my business was good. Yes. Yes, perhaps business was too good. Too good. Hello, darling. Oh, oh hello, dear. Hurry now and dress for dinner. We're going to the theater with the Pollocks. Tonight again. Yes, now do hurry. It's 7.30. Why do you have to stay so late at the office? It takes money to run a home. Oh, darling, I shouldn't have said that. Hurry, run along and dress. But must we go? We've the tickets now, and it's the last performance at the Playhouse. I'm sorry. I, I just can't make it. Now you run along. Go ahead without me. Hmm? I... All right. I don't like to go without you, but I really had my heart set on seeing the show. Rebecca? Hello, Rebecca. Who's there? Hello, dear. Oh, oh it's you, Fred. Mm -hmm. You frightened me. You're home early. Dinner ready? I'll fix a snack and a jiffy. So? Or uh, would you like me to send out for something? No, no, don't bother. Have a busy day? Oh, yes, tea this afternoon and... Oh, Fred, darling, you won't be angry with me now. No. Oh, you've been shopping again. Huh? How did you know? Well... Oh, you'll love them, I know. An evening wrap and the most stunning gown. I must show you. Come along, just wait till you... Hello? Fred, dear, would you mind awfully if I went to the country with the Pollocks? It's a weekend party. I told them you had to work at the office, but they insisted I go. Yes, but we plan... Don't be difficult, Fred. We plan to go dancing tomorrow night, like old times. I know, Fred, but they're so insistent. Do you... do you want to go? It'll be so much fun, and you're so busy at the office. Yes, yes, I'm very busy. I guess you'd better not disappoint them. Go along, I'll see you Monday. I've made up sandwiches and stocked the icebox for you. Goodbye, darling. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye now. I remembered the sense of foreboding I felt when I fell in love with my wife. Here were the roots, growing, spreading out, stifling our relationship. No longer was it give and take. Now she took everything, gave nothing. Her selfishness seemed endless, too prolonged to be coincidental. Tonight, dear? Oh, Fred, I'm going to the opera. I'll call for you at eight. Too tired, Fred. I've shopped all day. Like old times. I know, dear, but I can't. Can't. No time. Can't. No time. I don't know why I went on loving her. We stayed in the same house. Lived separate lives. Her elaborate tastes were draining our funds. She contrived to have all our property, our assets, put in her name. Something warned me there was trouble ahead for the two of us. And as the fifth year of our marriage anniversary approached... I became more and more convinced of it. And then, the newspapers began running accounts of strange attacks made on innocent victims late at night. The victims were always badly cut up by a knife. A maniac at large, a dangerous criminal mind at work. My birthday came nearer. I spent a sleepless week just before it, and then, last night, I went back to the office late to keep my mind occupied. It was about 1 a.m. when I returned home. Rebecca? Oh, 
Oh, it's you. I, I thought you were in bed. No. No, I, I had to walk, Rebecca. What are you doing with that knife? Oh, oh, it's only an old one I found with some discarded cutlery. Clasp knife. A corn handle. What? Why do you look at it so? Huh? Oh, oh, it's nothing. I just don't remember seeing it around the house before. Well, I, uh, I was cleaning out the attic the other day. I, I found it then. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Stupid of me to forget. It's time you were in bed. Yes. Yes. Uh, why don't you go along? I'm so sleepy. Don't stay up too late now. Uh, Rebecca. Yes? Uh, don't you want me to put away that knife? Oh, no, I'll put it away in the morning. I'm going to bed now. Good night. It's the same. That night at the inn five years ago. That clasp knife with a buckhorn handle. First by the fireplace. A storm is blowing up like that night. You're afraid. Afraid. That voice again. Why was I a fool to think the spell was broken? The spell of my birthday lingers with me, catches up with me. Will it overtake me again tonight? Everything tonight is the same as that night at the inn. Everything but... Hello. Rebecca. I, I thought you were in bed. And I expected to find you asleep. That white robe. It seems familiar, but I, I don't remember. It's new. Rebecca, the knife. Yes. Where did you get it? I told you once. Come now, you don't expect me to believe that. Believe what you will. Where did you get it? That is none of your business, since you insist. You refuse then to tell me? Exactly. Then you force me to make a very difficult decision. I must turn you over to the police. <laughs> oh, you're not serious. I certainly am. Years ago, I slept at an inn on the west coast of England. A woman tried to murder me in my bed. I've read of many such cases happening within our own city in the past six months. So? The woman who attacked me used a clasp knife, like the one you had tonight. You're that woman. You're quite mad. Nevertheless, I'm turning you over to the police. Do you expect an inspector from Scotland Yard to believe such a fairy tale? <laughs> Imagine your own wife, your very charming wife, trying to kill you. You know it's not a fairy tale. Mm, I'll tell the police, of course. You're... You're completely mad. I don't know about that. <laughs> you thought I knew so little about business and such. The estate, you know, belongs to me now. Your wife. Do you still believe I married you because I loved you? You're, you're a witch. <laughs> but no one will ever know, will they? Well, what's that in your hand? Rebecca, put down that knife. You old fool, you're afraid just like all the others. You... It was you who attacked all those other innocent people. You're a maniac. Don't. Don't come any closer. Stand still. It won't hurt. <laughs> I warn you. Stand back. <laughs> Don't run away. You're going to get hurt, Rebecca. Get back there. There. <laughs> you see and you cut my arm. Drop that knife. No, never. Drop it. Oh. Let go. You're breaking my arm. My own wife. A murderous. My, my arm. Drop that there. Oh, you beat me, you vixen. Here, give me that knife. My, my dress. You've torn it. Give me that knife. No. Come back. Come back. Drop that knife, Rebecca. Rebecca. I must stop her. I must. Rebecca. Rebecca, come back. Rebecca. Oh, follow me. I warn you. Come down, Rebecca. Come down off that fire escape. I warn you. I have this knife and I'll use it. I'll use it. She went to the roof of the building and I lost her trail. I continued searching throughout the night, all morning. And this afternoon I went home and she was not there. I rested. Then tonight I resumed my search. I must find her before two o'clock, my birth hour. I must find her, I must. I can't have any peace until I find her and get that knife. The knife. The knife. That's it there. You mean this one? Yes. It's the exact knife I told you about. Oh, I see now why you want it so badly. Then tell me, where did you get it? I don't know. For if... heaven's sake, man, I must know. Well, it was a woman. Yes? Came in here about 7.30 this evening. With this knife? Yes. At the time, I wondered why she wanted to sell it. She was obviously of good family. Go on, go on, you bought it. Yes. And where did she go? Where did the woman go? Ah, poor thing. The tailor next door told me. A woman answering her description was killed about an hour later. It must have been horrible. Oh. The cab struck her as she crossed the street, walked right into it in the darkness. What? What was she like? Very beautiful. Yes. Blonde hair, 
I remember offering to call a cab for her. She was not prepared for the weather. Did she? She wore a white gown, more like a robe than a dress. Who was it? Yes, by Jove, it was torn. No. Yes, now I remember. That's another reason I offered my help. No, no, it couldn't be. But it was, sir. Your dream woman. Your dream woman. Dream woman? No. No. Oh, yes. It was. My wife. It was my wife. My wife. No dream woman. My wife. My wife. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the dream woman. Bellkeeper, hold the bell. <laughs>